wild lifetimes couldn't drag me away. <laughs> oh boy, Easter again. I was talking to a minister friend, her name is Nancy Norman from Unity of Ventura. She's been at this for as long as Morgan and I have. She's going, what are we going to talk about for Easter? You guys know about this. This is my fifth Easter with you, and she's on her ninth Easter with her friends at her church. She's like, I don't know what to talk about. So I'm sitting in my favorite throne room, the bathroom, and I'm reading The Power of Now. I don't even like the title of the book right now. I'm not crazy about my now right now. I want a different now. Unfortunately, you can't have a different now. This is the now you get. Holy cow, you're in the now whether you like it or not. So I pick up this wonderful card. Liberation through change. <clears throat> Become an alchemist. Transmute base metal into gold. Suffering into consciousness. Disaster into enlightenment. <laughs> That's what Jesus did, didn't he? He was a master alchemist. He transformed base level thinking and ideas about who we are and what we are and where we come from. He transformed them. He transmuted them. He was an alchemist who lifted up chakras one, two, and three to four, five, six, seven. He lifted up the mama, the prana, the chi, the kundalini, the Holy Spirit, and helped us awaken. So. You could take on his suffering, the suffering that everyone goes through here and turn it into moments of consciousness, existence, and bliss. He worked with the disaster that is our lives <laughs> so we could become enlightened. Everyone here is an alchemist. We're changing and lifting up consciousness. So this Easter season, for the whole time, next week, this week, today, we're going to look at the journey of awakening as our journey. Are you willing to go on this journey with me? Yes? Are you willing to go on this journey with me? Yes. No, no. Honey, not, not yet. Not yet. Is that that music play? Yes. Where's that coming from? Okay. You hear that? Yeah. Okay, good. That, was, that, that comes later in the talk. You don't want to ruin the punchline. Hey, you don't know talk about that. Yeah? Not yet. Not yet. That comes later. That comes later. Are you willing to join me in this? To become an alchemist? It requires that you become present with the life you're living right here and now. It's not the next lifetime that counts. It's what? The lifetime that we're in, right here and now. We have a ship of consciousness. We can sail to freedom and awakening if we choose to do that. And Jesus did that. He took on alchemy. He took on the world and brought our, a new way of being, thinking, living, acting, and reacting in the world. And then this last week of his life, we're going to talk about Palm Sunday and Easter and Good Friday. And we go into then to Easter Sunday. He does that. He takes that seed of God consciousness in all of us. And he helps it grow and blossom. Because everything that you are that has been given to you by God is already present in the seed. And it's called Christed consciousness, the Buddha nature. It's already there. Alchemy doesn't make something out of nothing. It takes that which already exists and increases and allows its full potential to be brought into fruition. Do you want to go on that journey with me? Yes. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to turn up your internal thermostatic set point and put it on high? Say, I am. Say, amen. I'm willing to do this. And if you're here and haven't left or walked out, you realize the responsibility to do that does not belong with someone else, but with you and your relationship to God within you. And it starts with a decision, a seed that you receive that helps you begin the journey. We all remember that moment when it came to us. I'm reading an amazing book now. It's possibly the best book I've ever written. I'm not recommending it for the book club. It's not a book club read, but it could be, but not really. It's a personal read. It's about a man named Shanta Ram. His name is actually Gregory David Roberts. And he has quite a life story, just like we all do, a life story. He was in prison in Australia. He was pretty much a heroin addict. He stole, he raped, he robbed, he pillaged. He did everything he could, and it got, his choices got him into prison, being in prison. 
And it was there that he has a major breakthrough. And he breaks out of prison and literally goes to India, the place of the heart of the teachings of all the world. And while he's there, he works in a slum, and he helps set up a clinic for healing people. He ends up joining the mafia. His old thought system comes back. He goes around pillaging and taking, and he's an angry man. But something inside of him realizes there's a seed in him where he can turn the disaster of his life into enlightenment, his suffering into awakening. And it begins, as it all does, it does for all of us, sometimes in a moment when things are not going all that well for us. It starts in chapter one, the first paragraph. It took me a long time and most of the world to learn what I know about love and faith and the choices we make. But the heart of it came to me in an instant while I was chained to a wall and being tortured. I realized somehow through the screaming in my mind that even in that shackled, bloody helplessness, I was still free. Free to hate the men who were torturing me or to forgive them. It doesn't seem like much, I know, but in the flinch and bite of the chain, when it's all you've got, that freedom is a universe of possibilities. And the choice you make between hating and forgiving can become the story of the rest of your life. Do you hear that now? And the rest of the book of life, and he's a slow learner like I am, is very thick <laughs> with his thick skull of forgetfulness. You read a chapter and go, oh, he's got it. No, he's, got, he's lost it. Oh, he remembers. Oh, he forgets. Oh, there it is. No, he's never going to look. No. He, you know what I'm talking about? This is your life. The book is thick of our remembering and forgetting. Is it not? It happens to all of us. We're all thick heads. We're all thick skulls. That's why we keep coming back every single week to hear the same thing over and over again. Because the Bible, the story of our lives, is real thick. We need help every step of the way. And that help shows up when you need it. It reaches out and, and touches you. For me, it was with Maureen in 1972. We, we walked into the Science of Mind Church and I knew I was home. I don't know what they were talking about, but I knew that there was a seed in me, a great thing that was possible for me, that through alchemy I could lift myself up out of the life I had been living to awaken to who I truly am, that that was my reason for being here, and it was the reason for everybody else being here as well. That's what we're here to do, to release that energy, to realize who it is that we are. And this, this journey is a journey of awakening. This Easter season, Jesus will switch not just from teaching us with words, but with what he did. How he acted and reacted while the world brought on suffering, while the outer circumstances looked disastrous and bleak. How did he react? And we have a volume of knowledge about the choices that he made through what we know now about what Jesus was really doing here. It's huge, it's big, and it's possible for you and I to do those things and even greater things. Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to awaken to who we are. No matter what your situation, no matter what your circumstances are, they're perfect for your awakening to who you truly are. You don't need to wait, you don't need to postpone it. You don't need to wait to get things get better. You can begin to practice this awakening now. And when I was thinking about this man named Shantaram Gregory, Lynn Baba, all the names he goes by, he has lots of names in the book, I was thinking about uh, Mary Morrissey's second Prosperity Plus class. Let me get this over with. You have to take Prosperity Plus one and two. You just have to do it. I'm in Prosperity Class two with about 12 people, and we've taken Prosperity Plus One, and our lives in Prosperity Plus Two, as it did in One, are being changed. People say, I'm not taking that class, you gotta tie 10 of 10. I'm not tithing 10 of 10 of my income. I'm not gonna do it. Get over it! <laughs> do it! It's not about money! It'll change you! We are being changed. Are not miracles happening as a result of that class? class to end. We don't want the class to end. And believe me, I am in the worst place I've been in emotionally and physically. And I can't wait to drag my sorry, limpy butt into that seat to hear this master teacher tell me truths that I need to know now. I'm more open to it now when I can't figure it out myself. I need help, and the help shows up. So we're in the ninth week, and she has these characters that she brings out to help us learn. And one of them <laughs> is a character named Calico Jack. 
He's a pirate. Amen. He's got the one leg like I do, you know, that works really good. And he goes, Arrgh, Say all that with me. My name is Calico Richard, and I'm here to help you understand what I'm getting to learn about my life. He's a pirate. He's taken everything from life and given nothing back. He's sunk many ships. The man, is, his life is a disaster. And something happens to him. And he begins to shift his consciousness from being a taker to being a giver and a liver. He begins to awaken to the seed potential that we all have. And it means he has to abandon many of his old ways of being and thinking in the world of appearances. It means that he's got to use the ship of his consciousness not to stay asleep, but to awaken. And we're given a roadmap in the life of the masters. We're given a roadmap in every one of the teachings on how we can do that ourselves. Would you like to hear what those secrets are? Say, yes, I would, Minister. Please help me. I need this. You do. You do. Here's the first real big key. When you're facing a storm in your life, like you're on a ship, a sailboat, it is your life, it's your body, don't go off to the port side. Because the wave that's coming, the storm will knock you over and roll you under. Don't go to the starboard side, because the wave will knock you under and roll you over. Yeah? What do you do? You head right into the storm. Now, I've got a different insight than Mary's about what you do next. You see, the hands are now reaching out, and you're getting all the help that you did. There's, you need. It's right there for you. Something shifts in you as you head into the challenges you're facing. And for me, one of the really big ways I've been able to head into the storm has this new practice that Maureen and I are doing, you can lower the lights, that has really been a lifesaver for me. And if you look at some of the images that are on this particular video, you'll see it's the ship, it's the boat, it's the sea, but it's also the hands reaching out to help you help yourself. Consciousness, bliss. I am existence. 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 Consciousness, bliss. I am. When you reach out and ask for the help, the help comes and reaches out to you. But you've got to be willing to do your part every day. The help comes. It comes in the form of teachings. It comes in the form of people who love you, who want to help you. God speaks through so many different forms and ways and means. So when you see a storm coming, it's reaching out to you to help you learn. You are not alone. You don't need to do this alone. It's not a mental concept. It's a spiritual knowing that you can bring into the moment. I've been thinking a lot about my dad, Alvin, believe it or not, because I've, I've had more anger in me in the last couple of months than I've ever noticed before. It's just, it's there. I'm mad. And my dad was a crazy madman, but he was also someone who gave me a great gift. He was an incredible captain. My dad knew boats. His boat was his reality. And he knew what to do with boats. He taught me what to do with boats. And, and I remember when we'd face storms, There'd be, there'd be three or four of them that could turned our boat over, capsized it. But my dad, he knew what to do. He put my little eight, nine-year-old body, he probably would have been sued for doing this now. And I would, <laughs> child protected agency, 911, 911, eight-year-old on bow boat while that goes up and down on waves. But I'd be, I'd be there with my, my life raft on, and we head right into the storm. 
right into it. We go right into the storm. He would say, all right, mate, throw the line out. Drop the anchor. The anchor would be just a little bit of you that knows, even when you don't know. That part of you that doesn't seem to be connected, doesn't take all of you. Just drop the anchor. Drop it into the water, the deep water. And then he would say, Richard, he called me Dick. Dick, let out all the line. Let out every single inch of the line. And then he would tie it up, and the boat would ride out the storm. It would go up. And it would go down, up and down. And man, it would go up and it would go down. But we never went down because we were riding out the storm. We were practicing being present with what is. You have everything on the ship of your life you need to awaken to who you are. You don't need to sink another ship to get another body, to start off with another crew, to go to another town, to meet more people, be a mother, be a father, be a sister, be a brother, be a mommy, be a daddy. You can do it now with the ship that you're in now. You don't need to wait till you die. You can do it. Now, you let out the line, you ride the waves of existence, consciousness, and bliss. And the truth is, the storms don't last forever, do they? They pass by. And then, then when, when it's all calm again, then you proceed to move forth in the direction of your dream. That's alchemy. That's working with a spiritual principle that Mary gives us called um, pattern interruptus. Maureen actually came up with the interruptus part, which surprised me. Um, that was not me. <laughs> so when you're in the middle of being what you normally do, interrupting that pattern can be a very powerful teaching. You interrupt it. You take a pause. You let out more line. You don't go right into it and get all beat up and slammed up. You just you take a moment and you interrupt the pattern of how you usually react to things. Rather than being a nuclear reactor, an unclear reactor, you step back. So you can then make what? A response rather than a reaction. And you watch. Wow. Some amazing energy joins you. You see, because what happens to us is the things that we have really strong opinions about have an electrical charge to them, whether they be positive or negative. And it's that electrical charge that sets forth the impulse that creates the experience you have in any one moment. That's why the Course in Miracles says, all, all things are neutral. You give everything the meaning it has for you. The things that troubled me this week, bless you, and got me hooked, were not the things that hooked you. You have your own list of things that are going on in your life that are driving you crazy, right? They have electrical charges and impulses. The spiritual principle is exactly the same. You don't go headlong into the same direction you're headed into because you're going to break up. You're going to break up the ship. You spend time stepping back. You interrupt the pattern, and then you wait for the storm to calm down. And it does, doesn't it? You don't have to wait till the next lifetime to be a little baby, get your butt smacked again. You can be fresh and innocent and new in this moment. It's beautiful. That's what the teachings are offering us, that golden opportunity. And then you start transforming the energy by going in the direction that you want to go in and knowing that you're going to be helped every step of the way. So, um, I haven't been all that much fun to be around lately. And uh, Maureen left for a couple of days last week, and she said she was going to go visit our granddaughter, but I knew what she was doing. She needed to get away from me. I wasn't even gone 24 hours. I know. <laughs> It seemed like days, it was only 24 hours. But she needed, you know something? Do you ever feel like you need to get away from yourself? I just, can I just get on a bus, a car, a train, a plane, and get away from me? So she's gone. And so she's taking the car, and I, I'm, I'm, I've just got done with it. I am existence, consciousness, and bliss. I am existence, consciousness, and bliss. And then I get this great idea. I think I'm going to take my bicycle to the gym and go work out. Oh, what a stupid idea. Get on the bicycle. Wow. Are you nuts? I can't get my leg over a bicycle pedal. I could just see me doing that, but I'm going to do it because damn the torpedoes are, mate. I'm going to the gym. I'm not going to let my upper body deteriorate. I got two toothpicks and no butt left. I'm going to keep my arms big, big, big. Ugh. And I can't find the keys. The keys. 
keys to go to the gym. I can't find the keys to get in the house. I can't find the keys to stuff out of car. So I go along, limping around. Where the heck are the keys? You know what? I think Maureen probably took both sets of keys. Maureen always takes both sets of keys. She's got the keys. I call her on the phone. I'm going, hi, Maureen. Where are the keys? You got the keys? You got the keys? You got the keys? Got the keys? I don't have the keys. I didn't take the keys. I said, I need the keys. What do I need the keys for? I'm going to go to the gym. What are you talking about? You're going to the gym. You have no car. I'm going to take my bike. Oh, our mate. That's a real stupid idea. And what happens to you with these teachings is not only do you get to interrupt the cycle that you're about to go into, but God interrupts it for you. His hands reach out and stop you from going in a disastrous direction. And if you get real subtle with yourself and honest with yourself, you start to take those cues when they happen. You realize, I'm being told not to do this because I'm about to make some really big mistakes. You can choose not to, and I've chosen more not to than I have. I've chosen to give up and surrender. But God is always there saying, let me interrupt you for a moment. Take a while to find your keys. Go ahead. Limpy, go find your keys. Go ahead. And finally, 25 minutes later, I find my keys. Well, what do you know? They were in the pants pocket. But I took my pants off, but that was in my shorts. And by the time I took the keys out of my pocket, it was gone. The mantra I had been chanting, which is my personal favorite, after I get done with existence, consciousness, and bliss, I have my version of it. My ego says to me, I am resistance, consciously miffed. I am resistance, consciously miffed. I am resistance, consciously miffed. I want to do this. What are we doing? The other voice says, go ahead, end up on the corner of Oleander, in Independence, in the middle of the street, the big pile of mush and red lights. Go ahead, idiot. But I am with you always. I am existence, consciousness, and bliss. And thank God I, I didn't go. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a good story. I probably wouldn't be speaking in front of you. But, you know, what do you want to do? I mean, the book of your life is really thick. How long do you want to wait to learn the lessons the easy way? Um, no, nope, I'm only on chapter 14. I've got another 40 chapters of idiocy to go on. Why are you doing that? You could learn it now. Here it is, do it. Come on. Listen to your own teachings. Watch your own YouTube. Go be a movie. I'm giving you these teachings. They're not for anyone but you. You, 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 you. You, the beloved. You, the spiritual being living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law, being taken care of by God. You, I'm reaching my hands out to you. I can't strangle you and stop you from doing what you're going to choose to do that I can give you another choice if you want to join me. And that's what this Easter season of transmutation and inner alchemy is all about. So I'll stop screaming and we'll look at the lesson summation and see what we can do with it. So again, become, and now, go back to the first one. It's so good. It's a big one to take with you. Liberation through change. Anybody going through any changes or challenges? <coughs> become an alchemist. That is to transmute metal into gold. Suffering into consciousness. Disaster into lightning. Ask for help you receive it. For lesson point number one. When you're facing a storm in your life, head straight into it and drop your anger. For me, it's been drop your anger. Anger. Let all the line out. And allow your ship to do what? Ride the waves of change. Ride it. Just be aware. You'll calm down. You'll get your power back. Don't keep giving it away. Pattern interruptus allows us to recognize and connect with our own internal source of knowingness. It's always there. It's the seed. It's the potential. It's the Christ consciousness. It allows us to hit the pause button and gives us a moment to respond rather than to react to our situations. And finally, by interrupting our pattern base instincts, and they're very powerful, we transform them into golden opportunities to use everything for awakening to who we truly are. We practice this, my friends, not just for ourselves, but for all beings everywhere. And once you calm down and gather yourself, and the hands reach out and tell you I am with you always, you then get to journey into Jerusalem and bring peace to a world that's at war with itself. You 
bring the peace of your own soul with you. And you then bring peace to everyone else on planet Earth. Again, my friends, we do this for all beings everywhere. Amen. Namaste. Amen. Let's take a moment to bless our offering.